Welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor. And in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about why and how to do long exposures. I'll give you a hint, it has to do with flowing waterfalls, motion blur, and night skies. Why and how do you do long exposures? What are the main reasons that you want to leave your shutter open to create a long exposure? Well, as I see it, there are two main reasons. Reason number one is so that you can let a lot of light soak into your image so that you can capture gorgeous night skies. Take a look at this image that one of my rock star students, Jackie Monroe, captured for 20 seconds. Folks, this is a long, long exposure, okay? 20 seconds. Do you think she was hand-holding that? Absolutely not. For long exposures, you need to have a tripod. So this gorgeous shot of the Milky Way was locked down on a tripod and captured for 20 seconds. So this is one of the main reasons that you would want to shoot a long exposure is to let a lot of light soak in when there is not a lot of light available, like capturing a night sky. Reason number two is so that you can allow motion to be captured and allow motion blur to be present in your images. Let's take a look at this next image from my rock star student, Brenda Williams. She let all of the motion of this fireworks capture in this image, this eight second long exposure. Let's take a look at this next image from Kristen Wallace. All right, this is a gorgeous flowing waterfall shot that she left open for 1 13th of a second. Not 13 seconds, just a 13th, a single 13th of a second. But that captured all of that motion blur, having that gorgeous flowing water. In fact, I want to go ahead and play a lesson from my Master Your Camera course where I'm gonna show you in real time how to use shutter priority and capture gorgeous flowing waterfall shots. Let's go ahead and take a look at that lesson. Hey folks, David Molnar here. I am on location at the gorgeous Burgess Waterfalls and I wanna show you real quickly how to use shutter priority to only control your shutter speed and then take gorgeous waterfall photos because in this situation, what we don't want to do is freeze that motion. We don't want to see those water droplets like frozen in action. We want to see them flowing through our images. So I'm going to show you how to just change the shutter speed, which is the duration of time you're actually taking the image to allow that water to, to flow through your image. But all you have to do is change the shutter speed in the shutter priority mode. So that's what we're going to go ahead and take a look at. Let's go over here. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that your dial over here is, is to shutter priority. On the um, Canon uh, Rebel EOS T6, you go to TV mode, which stands for time value, but it's the shutter priority mode, okay? And um, I forgot to reset my camera for a second to mess it up, so I'm messing it up now. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure and set your ISO first. Now, when I'm doing an automatic mode or semi-automatic mode, temp Typically what I'd suggest is do it in um, auto ISO, because then it's gonna automatically set the ISO and the aperture for you when you set the shutter speed. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can go to Q, and I can go to ISO, and I can go to auto. So we'll go ahead and do that. Here's a little hint. We're gonna end up at ISO 100 anyway, but let's just set it to auto, because that's what you should typically do when you're shooting in a semi-automatic mode, okay? Now, what you can do is you can just simply change the shutter speed, which is this dial up here. Let's take a picture real quick, just to see. First of all, this image is too dark. When you press this AV mode right here, it's not changing the aperture like it typically does in manual. It's changing the exposure compensation. It's saying intentionally take a picture that is <clears throat> over one stop too dark, so underexposed. So I want to set this to zero. So I press AV, and then I twist this dial up here and now I'm too correctly exposed. So let's take a picture. Now this picture is technically correctly exposed, but we're at 500th of a second, which is freezing that motion. You know, if I wanted to freeze the motion even more, I could go to, let's say, a 1250th of a second, and now it's freezing that motion even more. But what I wanna do is I wanna slow that shutter speed down to, I don't know, like a 10th of a second or something. We'll see what we can go down to. 
so that we see water moving, okay? So let's try it at a hundredth of a second. Okay, that's still pretty fast. I feel like we see a little bit of water moving, but not much. So let's go even more. And the cool thing is, the camera is automatically setting your aperture and your ISO for you. You don't have to think about it because you're in shutter priority. You prioritize the shutter, it does everything else. So I'm gonna keep on going, so I'll go to a 30th of a second. That's a pretty long duration of time, and you're starting to see water move through that image. So that's good. But let's see if we can go even further. All right, we'll go to a 15th of a second. And now we're really starting to see that motion coming through our image. That's awesome, we're seeing that water flowing through. Let's keep on going as much as we can. A sixth of a second. And that looks gorgeous, look at that. So all we had to do was change our shutter speed till we got the correct motion that we wanted and we got a gorgeous image like this where you see everything is perfectly still except for the water that's flowing through the image. And look at those water trails, that is absolutely stunning. So we could attempt to see if we can go even more, but I suspect that it's gonna start making the image too bright. So let's try to see. So we're gonna start dragging the shutter. And look, it's, you, can, you can tell the exposure is changing. So let's go to a fourth of a second or a half a second. And now what's happening here is the image is too bright. So we kind of maxed out, okay? We, that's the most we can drag the shutter in this lighting situation, um, or we start getting the photo to be overexposed. So let's go back to where it was correctly exposed which was a sixth of a second. And then that's where we're ending up. So that's how you would quickly and easily use shutter priority to get the correct exposure, but also the, the shutter speed or the motion blur or movement that you actually want. David Molnar, signing off. I hope you enjoyed that lesson on shooting waterfalls and creating long exposures. In the next lesson, I'm so excited because we're gonna talk about how to freeze action. So whether you're shooting sports or just fast running toddlers like I have running around my house, we're gonna teach you exactly how to do that. I'm super excited and I'll see you in the next lesson.